So I do think we're at this, this kind of critical moment, this turning point, perhaps I could say, an inflection point where we need to actually tip the balance in favor of a more inclusive digital future for all. And of course, we've heard a lot about the coverage gap versus the usage gap. I think for us at the ITU, we like to call it meaningful connectivity. So it's not about that connection, which we've done pretty well, I think, getting that connection, getting the coverage there. It's about everything that comes afterwards. It's about the device. It's about the skills. It's about the content. It's about everything that we need to actually make that experience meaningful and, of course, empowering. So just a, a couple, of, a couple of, of thoughts or spaces I think that we need to be actioning. I think the, the first, which is a bit challenging, is to think about technological innovation and the pace of technological innovation and compare it with digital inclusion. And I think when we look at how quickly tech is moving and we look at what's happening in the field of artificial intelligence, we ask ourselves, if you want to be part of the AI revolution, you have to first be part of the digital revolution, which I think heightens the importance around digital inclusion. We need to connect the unconnected, and we need to try to balance that rapid pace of technology and bring those that are currently not included into the digital space. And in your report, of course, you, you show that adoption is increasing, but the pace of adoption is, is slowing. And I hope it's not going to take another pandemic, God forbid, to, to increase it again. But it, it does stress the importance of all of us working together. Many of you have made the point about partnership, and I think that partnership element is, is absolutely, absolutely key. And one of the previous speakers mentioned everything that's happening, for example, in digital skills. And imagine if we all came together with our different digital skilling efforts, I think we could make a tremendous difference very quickly. And of course, Claire, as you know, that's part of the motivation behind equals and also part of the motivation behind partner to connect. I think the second space, and this has been uh, echoed by our previous speakers, is also that digital gender gap. We may not have had it on the panel, but it's real. Women have less access to the internet. They have less access to a smartphone. They have less access to the tech workforce because we don't succeed in attracting them to take up studies in STEM fields. So we got to start young. We have to encourage young girls and women to take up careers in the tech sector. Uh, and we need to really walk the talk and not just, not just talk about it. And of course, when we get women into the tech force, we need to make sure they stay there. Uh, and as someone was also mentioning, we don't want women to just be users. We want them to be creators. We want them to be innovators. And I think that's a space where we need to actually do much, much more. And I guess my third point would be, and coming uh, a couple of weeks ago from the UN uh, General Assembly, and I wear my SDG pin proudly, I do think we have to put digital at the center of our efforts to achieve the Agenda 2030, the 17 SDGs, and also the African Agenda 2063. So when we look at the SDG targets, 15% on track, we have seen that actually if you use digital technologies, if we have access to the internet, we could actually accelerate progress on 70% of the SDG targets, which is, which is quite remarkable. And I think that's, that's the kind of digital future we want to create, one that gives us access to agriculture, healthcare, education, and, and much, much more. 